Hello there everybody, it's me, your guy Waddles, your gamer, welcome back to the Minecraft Guide episode number 31, wow, that's a big, big number, but I hope you're all doing well today, I don't know where Pam is, I, I forgot where I left her, but not a big deal, she's definitely somewhere around the base, but I've got a question, would you like to see the most disgusting thing I own? Mm hmm no, probably not, but I'm gonna show you anyways, so, disgusting thing, this stuff right here, what is it? I don't I it's, yeah, it's it's like a bird flew through here and yeah, you know, it's like cookies and cream ice cream, but but cookies and cream ice cream is good. I, it's just disgusting. I I don't know what why this is even a thing. Ah ha, Pam, there you are. Why did you go over here? That's not good. Bad dog. So, welcome back everybody. Today we are going to be breaking ground officially on our Villager Village project. If you didn't catch the last episode, you definitely should. I kind of lead into that project in that episode, and then we worked on a really cool low-tech efficient ice road design in the nether. And now before we do anything today, I'd like to just say thank you to you guys for supporting the series so far. It's been amazing, it's been really fun to do, and yeah, just, just seriously, thank you. And uh, also, if you like the video, drop a like. <laughs> so, today we're going to start by actually working on a little bit of enchanting, then we're going to lead into the project. So, we need a better diamond shovel. We also need a better diamond shovel that has mending on it, so... I think what we're going to go ahead and do is head back over to the desert in a minute here and trade a bunch more carrots and maybe some potatoes and hopefully come out of the deal with at least 12 emeralds. But first, before we head over there, we need to check the enchanting table. We haven't enchanted in a while. It's been honestly a long time. I'd like to try and, and hopefully get a better diamond shovel. So. What we're going to do is we're going to take this shovel right there, thank you very much, and check the table. What do we have? Efficiency 4. Okay, so right off the bat, I think I'm going to go ahead and take that. That's really good. We have Unbreaking 3 right here. We can combine these two if it doesn't have Unbreaking 3. So, Unbreaking 3. Oh, look at that. Efficiency 4, Unbreaking 3. That is a beautiful, beautiful shovel. Thank you very much, Enchanting Table. This old... Di well, we'll put that back in the storage building, but now it's time to go over to that desert village. Uh, yes, I have the bed. Okay, over to the minecart. So, believe it or not, this might be one of the final times that we actually check out this village, at least for a while, because soon we'll have our own village. But uh, you, you need to give me lots and lots of emeralds, hopefully at least 12. I think 12 is, is achievable. Yeah, oh, 12 is easily achievable. Yep, there we go. Okay, 14, that's good. Now, do I have a villager that sells potatoes in this town anywhere? I don't think I do. Um, oh, there's a farm over there, though. Oh, but I took that composter, so definitely not over there. How about... Oh, oh, there's a composter right here. Hey, are you a farmer? No, you, you don't have a job. You... No, you're standing by the cactus. Okay, so... I guess that's gonna be about it for the emeralds. I, I guess we have more than enough anyways. Uh, you. No, not you. So, Sandy, it's time for you to sell me one more mending book, please. Thank you very, very much. These emeralds are mine, though. You're not keeping those. And now we need to level up our shovel by adding mending to it. Boom, just like that. Now this diamond shovel is going to become our work shovel for sure. Eventually, we'll try and get efficiency 5 on it to make it even better. But for now, efficiency 4, unbreaking 3. Well, that is definitely by far the best shovel that I've had in this world. So, emeralds, you guys gotta go back in there. Thank you very much. And now it's time to talk city planning. So today, we're going to talk about planning our villager village. Now to recap things a little bit, we'll be building a custom villager village. This custom villager village will hold all of our villagers and we'll go there to trade with the villagers. So it'll be basically a trading hall. Now today's episode is going to be a guide on how you can start planning and preparing for a custom village build. Maybe your custom village has villagers, maybe it doesn't. Either way, all of the information will still definitely apply. Now, if I'm being 100% honest today, I have zero idea whatsoever as to where we should build our custom village. But, I do know that this custom village should definitely be away from our base a little bit. Patrols seem to enjoy coming through my base for some reason, even though they have the same fate every single time. Now, the patrols have the banner guy. The banner guy gives me the bad omen. If we build our custom village, like, right here, and then the patrol is, like, in the sheep market, well, we could accidentally trigger a raid on our base, and 
Well, that would be a big headache. Imagine a Ravager walking through this field and just stomping all over my crops. That would be bad. That would really be bad. So the custom villager village should definitely be spaced out from the base. Now, the first idea that I had is on the other side of the wheat field. That would definitely be spaced out from the base a lot, and we would never accidentally trigger a raid for sure. But... I think this piece of land is kind of uninspiring. I, I was taking a look at it before the episode, and it's flat, it's open, it's good, it's definitely build ready, but I, I don't feel inspired by this location. I, I, I just, I don't really like this area, so this area is off the books. Now, we clearly have an outpost over there, and I'd like to not build a custom villager village near an outpost. Um, just sounds like a bad idea, so this desert over here in general is probably just out, and the forest over there is definitely out as well. Way too close to the outpost for my liking, so we'll have to go somewhere else. The other place that we could go is this way. So I think across this river would probably work pretty well, but it's a matter of where. The first idea that I have is maybe down that way under the monorail, but at the same time that starts to get a little close to our gigantic, horrendous looking mob farm, so maybe we shouldn't go that way. I definitely don't want to build this village in the plains biome over here because I'm gonna build my base in this plains biome. This is kind of what we have going, and if I built the village over there, well, that would take up a lot of potential build space, and I don't really like that. So, what about over here? Does this area look okay? I haven't really checked it out in a while, but what does this look like? Like, where that cow is? Is this anything that's workable, actually? Hmm. Hmm. I mean, it's really rough. The terrain would need a lot of work, but this might actually be the location for our custom villager village. I guess it's not as far away as I would necessarily like it, but... There's no way that a raid would be triggered if I got rid of a patrol from over there, if the villagers are all in this area. So let's go ahead and actually make our custom village in this area. So as you elites just saw, the first step to building a custom village is, of course, finding the plot of land. Now, the plot of land is really, really important. If you pick an uninspiring plot of land like the area over by the wheat field, your village will, it'll be harder to build. It'll be more of a pain because you're not inspired in the first place. So look around, take some time and find the exact spot where you'd like to build your village. The piece of land is definitely very important. But let me make this clear. It can be anywhere. You can pick anything that you like. So Pam, you have a very important job. You will be sitting and marking where the town will be about. Thank you very much and don't move. So we found the location. Now it's time to start actually placing blocks down and planning things. If you jump into a city build and just start building buildings, well, things definitely could work out. Maybe you're a really good builder. Maybe you've done it before and yeah, things will work out. But if you just jump into the project and don't think about things too much, you're also going to be a lot more likely to fail. A roadmap is always a nice thing to have. I mean, think about any big project. It could be some kind of really important thing or it could literally be making a meme. Usually before you do this stuff, you kind of plan it out, so you should definitely apply that logic over into the game here. So, we're going to actually start marking out our town with these blocks right here, maybe more wool if we need more. Now, the blocks that you use for this step can really be anything. If you have like a lot of cobblestone and granite and andesite, maybe use those things. Or if you have a lot of wool like we do, then use those. Now, each color here is going to represent something different. For example, the red will be the village border, I think. We'll do green as pathways, yellow will be buildings, and then blue will be any other city features like fountains, centerpieces, things like that. So this is sort of our key, our roadmap. Now we need to start placing blocks down. We should probably start with our village border. Where should the village go? Well, uh, we have some interesting terrain here. So we have this hill, which is, it's nice, but it might be hard to work around. I'm immediately thinking that we could do a bridge going from that hill over to this hill, and then maybe we walk down into the village. That might be kind of cool. So with that being said, let's say maybe we enter the village right in here somewhere. So we'll do an entrance and then a path to come in. Now, we'll, we'll probably end up building more to this path, maybe just something like that, because I kind of know I want to put a bridge here, but yeah, this will mark the entry path. Now, in this step, you don't have to be exact at all. You can kind of just place blocks down and get a rough idea. That's all you're really going for right now. 
Obviously, placing lines of blocks on the ground is a whole lot different than actually building things, so really don't think about it too much. Just go with whatever kind of feels right. Now, I think that I'd like to have our village be a bit of a circle, but not a perfect circle. So I'm thinking that we'll have our walls come down this way and go into this low area. In this low area, I'm thinking maybe they sort of curve out a little bit and fill up this flat space and then start curving back over towards these mountains and the hill over there. Now, honestly, I'm not too sure how much space we'll need for our town, so these walls might end up moving eventually. In fact, they probably will, but at least for now, we'll have a rough idea as to what we'd like to do. I know for a fact that inside of our villager village, I'll want to have some farms so the villagers can basically reproduce whenever they really need to and whenever they, I guess, technically can within the game's rules. So let's say our back wall goes over here. This is getting to be quite large as it is. So yeah, good back wall space over here. Then we can easily just go ahead and start curving things back towards the front. Um, I don't think we should go all the way to that river. That would be a bad idea. So... Let's just curve things back and around over here, but we'll work from the front side. And your guy ran out like a few blocks short, but that's okay. We only have three blocks right there, that's fine. Maybe we could even add another entrance into the village just to be safe. But of course, the villagers won't be able to use these entrances and exits. They will be trapped inside of the village forever. We cannot trust them. I don't know what they're thinking, and they can wander into a bad situation for sure. So, we'll have an entry path over here, and our wall will be about that shape. The village will be pretty sizable. Now, this entry path should definitely cut into the town, and then I think we could maybe work with the hill and have a staircase downwards. That could be really cool. At the front of the town, we could do gardens on either side of the entrance, and again, pretty cool. I think I actually like that idea. Now, as this walks down into the town, we're going to want to... I think get a little more messy a little bit more random i'm going for a really organized thing over there whether we'll actually end up doing that eh, i don't know but over here in this village i think things should be really hectic and, and kind of crazy so i'm gonna go ahead and put some random paths in and see how things end up and then we'll probably definitely end up readjusting the paths later on so what do we think about that now that's hectic, that is definitely really, really hectic. Hmm, now that I think about it, maybe we'll want to actually, maybe we could try and remove that back hill in the village so things enter and then go downwards. So that whole back hill, that area over there, maybe we'll try and flatten that today. I think that'll help us work with this area a whole lot better. Now I'm thinking that we'll have our path come into the town and go straight down into a bit of a marketplace area. That's what that blue pillar in the middle represents. The blue pillar over on the right hand side represents some sort of wheat field. Now I'm imagining that we'll have buildings sitting around the marketplace looking towards that central marketplace. In the middle of the marketplace, we'll kind of mimic the villager villages and probably put a bell or two in there. Now, the farms should probably be more spaced out and tucked back in the town. I'm thinking about doing another farm maybe in this bottom left corner, or this area right there. So, so far so good other than the flattening. Now, before we start marking out the buildings, I think we should actually work with the terrain a little bit and start leveling things, and that is where this brand new beautiful shovel comes in. So, we enter up here, and I definitely still do like that, but I would like to control it a little bit and make this basically a bit more, a bit more steep. Excuse me, Pam. <laughs> so, let's say maybe the entrance hill is something more like this over here. So, um, I guess we'll fill things back in a little bit. Oh no, that block. Oh boy. Something like this is a little bit better. This is slightly more steep. Then we have a flat space in here to start building buildings. So this hill will probably uh, kind of get blocked out a little bit. I am thinking some gardens on the entrance path would be pretty nice though. Now over here, if we did some sort of crop field or, or something in this area, we need this space to be leveled out a little bit. So I'm thinking that our hill on the entrance could probably sort of wrap back towards the river and towards all of our buildings over there. Then this area could probably be brought down quite a bit and the hill could be pretty steep. The villagers won't really need up onto the hill because, I mean, nothing will be up there. It'll just be a field leading towards the wall. Now, all of this space over here will be reserved for buildings, so I think we could go ahead and start marking things out. 
Now, inside of this town, I'd like to end up having something like maybe 13 or 14 villagers, I think. There are 13 different villager professions in Minecraft, I believe, so maybe one of each would be cool, but also maybe not one of each because I don't think each and every villager profession will necessarily be useful to us. Now, when you're placing where your building should go and trying to plan things out like this, again, you don't have to be exact. Use wool or another block to mark out your building shapes. Try and use different shapes. If you can work different building shapes into your village, things are going to look really, really good. So this hill, this is all going to have to go away. I think this is really complicating our town. We are going for a town that isn't entirely flat, but uh, this is pretty steep in there, and I don't know if we can really work with that very well. But I think we can actually work with the cliff that we'll end up creating behind the town. This trusty shovel is going to come in handy, but also torches. I think we could save a lot of durability on that shovel if we place some torches in there. So something like this, I'm thinking. The torch trick. The amazing, amazing... Okay, maybe maybe not. Maybe maybe it's a little tricky. This, this just might be quicker. <laughs> we'll go ahead and just dig this all out like that. No way, no way. Okay, so I'm working on flattening the land, right? Replacing the stone with sand because uh, the stone is kind of throwing me off. And I went into this cave system, right? And in the cave system right here, there were a couple skeletons and a creeper. And then uh, the skeleton did an elite game remove and got me another music disc. This is crazy. Like, I, you know, I'm planning on hopefully uh, collecting them all eventually, but wow another music disc that is really really crazy and i'm not meant to be caving right now so i think what i'm gonna do is just dig an entrance and hopefully i'll remember to come back and, and light this cave up hopefully <laughs> i'm sure i will it, just not today wow that hill that i took out that is there was a lot of blocks this is what that hill really was i mean of course i flattened other areas in the town as well but for the most part most of those blocks came from uh the back corner over there were the oranges but here is what we have now let's actually go ahead and go up a little higher so we can see more of this is very dangerous to do so be careful if you're towering up like this but uh, this will get us a much better bird's eye view so this is the village plan this is the shape this is where the buildings are going to go the paths are going to go and kind of what i'm thinking so step two to successfully building a custom village is preparation and planning you should definitely mark out where things are going to be now uh this village paths uh, the paths kind of look like a person like the the head is way over by the orange and then there's arms and then the stomach is the central market i don't know kind of interesting i didn't intentionally do that but just now noticing it i think we're gonna actually try and keep that there and it'll be like i guess a little easter egg now i've got buildings all over the town once we actually start building the buildings might end up moving but it's a good idea to start marking things out and then thinking while you're marking these things out what certain buildings could be for example that giant building right there i'm thinking that'll be a two-story building i don't know what will be in it but it'll be two stories now really this whole planning part is just about getting your ideas out in the game you can change things when you're building and you definitely should change things while you're building this is all just planning this doesn't take into account actually putting buildings in and seeing how they look when placed right next to each other so mark out your village plan things now there's a brand new color that i've introduced since last time the color is orange back there i actually added orange to our key over there just so i can remember really what i'm kind of thinking what i'm planning on doing so the orange represents what i'm calling hill buildings i'm planning on building some buildings on the back edge of the town maybe like stacked into the cliff right there that might look kind of cool but we might change that i don't know it's not much of a cliff so we'll see how things work out now there is one more step to the planning process that you could do but we actually won't be doing it today the final step to planning involves signs once you mark out where your buildings are going to go you could run around your town with signs and label what each building should eventually become so this building will be a farm building so i could say farm and then i'll have a farming area right over there next to it that's something that you could do for us we're not really going to be doing that because 
The important part here is that we have the buildings actually built. The villagers will probably end up living wherever they want to live. We're going to let them walk around the town freely, so labeling the buildings isn't too important. But I do have some, some rough ideas as to what I want to do with my buildings. Now, the final part of today's episode is leading into the building directly. After finding where you want to build your town and then plotting it out a little bit, it's time to start thinking blocks. What blocks will you be using? Our block palette for this town is going to consist of spruce wood, oak logs, sandstone and sand, and then terracotta. I think this will give us a really, really warm, deserty feeling, which is exactly what I'm going for. We will be skipping acacia in this build for the most part, and we'll be skipping things like spruce logs in the build. I'm going to try and stick very, very heavily to this build palette in this town. Now the terracotta doesn't have a specific color. I'm planning on using warm tones and maybe some purples in the town, but uh, for the most part, terracotta is just all terracotta. I'm not exactly sure what we'll end up doing. So find where you want to build your town, plan the town, and then figure out the blocks that you will be using. After accomplishing all of those things, then it is just about time to start building. And building will be the project for the next episode, at least partially. And so that is how you prepare and plan for a custom village build. This is part one of this big process. This project will definitely be a couple more episodes long. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode though, if you did, drop a like, subscribe as always, and all of my links are down in the description. Check out the merch as well, it supports me and helps me continue to make episodes. Today I'd like to send a big, big shout out to my patron, Sarah R. Thank you very much for the support, Sarah, and thank you all for watching. Until next time, this is me Waddles, stay cool, get rid of the diorite, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye everybody.